Hello and welcome to another submarine chat. This one is going to be about Russia's Kilo class submarine. I'm H.I. Sutton. I'm an independent defense analyst. These chats are unscripted, unedited. It's going to become obvious, I'm sure. Usual caveats. Let's get on with it. So the Kilo class submarine is quite significant. It's a major class submarine in the Russian Navy. It's also particularly relevant because it's the type that Russia has available to it in the invasion of Ukraine is the type they have in the Black Sea. There are five of them in the Black Sea, makes distinction four of the more modern improved Kilo, and there's one older original Kilo class submarine. Should point out that these five are not the same as how many Kilo class submarines there are in the Black Sea fleet. It's the number that were in the Black Sea at the time of the invasion. And since then, Turkey has closed the Bosphorus, so submarines can't enter the Black Sea and join the fight. So this is how many they've got available. The reason that the distinction between improved kilo and regular kilo is significant is because the improved kilo can fire the caliber cruise missiles. The original kilo, the one in the Black Sea, has been recently modified. It's unclear, but I would guess cannot fire the caliber cruise missiles. So the Kilo class was designed in the Cold War in the 1970s and entered service in the early 80s. It created quite a stir at the time. It was much better than the Soviet, um, now Russian, submarines, non-nuclear submarines that went before it. Here I've got a representative one, the Romeo class. There were a few other classes, the Whiskies, uh, um, Oxtra and so on. They all mounted to pretty much the same thing. These, when they were first built, were not, not bad. They were quite heavily influenced by World War II submarine developments in Germany, particularly the Type 21 U-boat. But by the 70s and 80s, they looked really quite old-fashioned. The Kilo, on the other hand, was very much a modern design. Teardrop hull, very streamlined. It's got a very large sonar at the front. That's the lighter-coloured um sort of areas at the front of both submarines shows it's going to be much more capable as a submarine platform both for hunting ships and also hunting other enemy submarines interesting design feature it's got a, a lower rudder but no upper rudder i think it's the only type of submarine um like that but uh, exactly why i don't know to be honest so if you know put it in the comments now during the 1980s it got some kind of reputation for being very quiet very stealthy so it was known as the black hole in the ocean this still gets used and there's a lot of hype about this submarine i think it's basically a myth it was very quiet in comparison to previous generations of russian diesel electric submarines so it was a fair descriptor in the 80s but it is essentially a 1980s submarine and things have moved on it doesn't have AIP, that's air independent power. So it has to snorkel more frequently than most other, or, or a lot of other submarines. And frankly, it's a generation older than the, the latest non-Russian non submarines, which have more modern uh, quietening. Now, not to take away, it is a very quiet submarine. It has very good machinery quietening and Russia has particularly good anechoic tiles on the outside submarine. So I'm not writing off, I'm not saying it's noisy, but it's not the super stealth submarine that it sometimes has the reputation for being. That was very context specific. That was in, re in rel relative to Russian submarines that went before it. And it was Cold War stuff. Here's my illustration of it. Point out, it's got quite a large torpedo room. It can carry quite a range of torpedoes and cruise missiles. We'll come more to that a bit. Large sonar at the front. Quite a simple design, really. Uh, double hull, like most Russian submarines. Not much to say. One of the boats is a bit interesting, Al Rosa. Now, this is in the Black Sea. It's one of the original kilos, but it was built with a pump jet propulsor instead of a regular screw or propeller at the back. I think that was just for experimentation. These propulsors were not fitted to any more Kilo class submarines or any other non-nuclear submarine for that matter. 
but they are very similar to what was subsequently fitted to the Russian ballistic missile submarines, the Bore class. So it's probably supporting that program. In general, pump jets are not suited to diesel submarines. I've got a, a video about that. I'll try to put that at the end. So here's a summary of the different models from the 1980s all the way through to the latest version still being ordered for the Russian Navy today, the Project 636.3 Improved Kilo Class. It's been heavily exported. 79 have been built or are planned. Russia still operates uh, 20 and has plans for six more, some of which are under testing. They have retired 14 though um so quite a successful submarine in and the most common or the most built submarine modern submarine so there's four ways it can be used in the black sea that make it particularly relevant the way that's it's currently being used is to launch caliber cruise missiles against ukrainian targets this is a uh, caliber cruise missile that was either shot down or crashed quite some time ago the missile is essentially Russia's answer to Tomahawk, and it's it's not bad. It gets mixed press. Ukraine does quite a good job at shooting them down, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad missile. Another way it could be used, and this has not been not been done, but it's a threat, especially since the end of the Black Sea Grain Initiative, is that it could be used to torpedo merchant ships now this sounds very extreme the advantage of torpedoes is that they could be denied as as obvious as it might be to us russia could all the say say no it wasn't us it wasn't a torpedo it was probably a ukrainian mine or whatever and it would take so long to prove it that the world would have moved on so it gives them a deniable but very extreme way to deter merchant ships from sailing to ukrainian ports they haven't done this, but it's a very real threat. Another way they could be used is to launch anti-ship cruise missiles. Caliber has an anti-ship version known as Sisla. The photograph is an export model, I just realized, but the, the Russian service model looks the same, functions the same. It's a very long-range missile, and it has a crew as a supersonic final stage. So it's taken very seriously by NATO. This is a top-end anti-ship missile. If they use these, it would be less deniable. And another way is to lay mines. I think Russia is currently using surface ships to lay mines, but submarines could also do it. Some of the mines they lay could be very sophisticated. Being a submarine, they could do it discreetly and they could lay the mines exactly where they want to. Maybe they have. How would we know? Um, but... As of the current information, this is more something that they could do rather than something that we know they're doing. Okay, that's, that's it. Um, quite quick, but hopefully useful. If you like, please like, subscribe, share. Um, thank you very much.